When the census recognized gay and lesbian couples in South Carolina, when it had same-sex people living in the same household, um, I remember that the state newspaper couldn't find any couples willing to talk to them about it. And I just thought that was kind of sad. Oh, I'm gay. I'm in South Carolina. Oh my gosh, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Identifying as a bisexual, um, especially an African-American woman, can be kind of tricky. My mom accused me of being influenced by demons. Um, I had a lot of, you're gay? It's funny because a lot of people tend to assume anything else before that, like before they think you're trans. Like they'll, they'll fill in the blanks with any other explanation. I hear like the slurs like faggot and that's so gay all the time. And it really, it really bugs me. Being somewhat quote unquote different, um, you get shunned by your family, shunned by your community, shunned by your church. And then when you lose that support system, when you lose that foundation, that family, that's devastating. So I was talking to my teenage son and explained that I was gonna start dating women now. And uh, I said, you know, I gotta let you know, uh, you know, I think I'm gay. And he said, is it okay if I think I'm straight? I love this story. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it sure is, honey. It's all about being able to be exactly what'll make you the happiest healthiest person for you. Yes, this person might be gay. Yes, this person might be a lesbian. But at the end of the day, they're just like me. And Jeremiah reminds the children of Israel that there is going to be a reconciliation. So why don't we start off with give me a high five. Give me a high five. <laughs> Jesus, when he looks at us, he doesn't see any difference. Whether we're a rat, or whether we're human, Jesus likes us all. And he tells us that we should love everybody. I became involved in the LGBT movement in South Carolina right after my son came out to me. That was in 1980. I had a problem with how society was going to treat him. And I felt there was a need to help other people, help other parents and family members to understand and accept and support their gay child with love and pride. So I founded the first group of parents, families, and friends of lesbians and gays. And believe me, that was quite a thing to do in South Carolina in 1982. The movement really sort of started with that first Pride March in Columbia in 1990. You know, Pride was the first time we met on the steps of the State House and we demanded our rights and we said, you know, you know, we're here and we're queer and this is what we want. And when South Carolina Equality came around, we hired a lobbyist because we were starting to experience a bunch of negative legislation. I learned the most about diversity in the 90s. At the time, I was trying to figure out why is it such a big deal that Latasha can't go to Lisa's party because she's black? Um, what's this big deal about gay people? Okay, we know that South Carolina is a little back there on the progress train. This is such a resistant state. I mean, when they finally, they, what was it, 1998? They voted to take miscegenation out of the Constitution and it still barely passed. When I started out transition, I didn't know how things were gonna go. I wasn't really acclimated to understanding the journey of being black and gay in South Carolina until I actually came to South Carolina and decided to accept who I was and come out. And my mom kind of left me when I, when I came out. Not like left me as a parent, she was still there, but it was like something was missing. You expect it to be a daily struggle. You expect to have to constantly correct people's pronouns, constantly correct people's names, and for a while, that is your life. <laughs> and you just, you just kind of, it, it, it's hard to have hope in the beginning. There was a time that people just didn't want to understand. You're different, you're not, I can't put a label around you, I can't, understand you. I can't put you in a box. So you're scaring me. And if you're scaring me, you're a threat to me. And so it was really a challenge to show that we're not a threat. We just want to be accepted and be treated as humans as we are. Seeing people who you wouldn't expect to be accepting change their views gives me the most hope. And I will say too, South Carolina Equality in 2006 organized outreach at the state fair. And that was the first ever public outreach at the State Fair on behalf of gay and lesbian citizens. And I think that probably, I think it, it helped us as much as it helped shape the conversation. 
Do you think that it's becoming a more open environment? Yeah. I think slowly a lot because of the work of students like Blair that we are um, definitely making progress and moving in the right direction. People want to be LGBT friendly. They want to appeal to us, but it also appeals to everybody else to have a gay friendly space. The generation younger than me doesn't understand how huge that is. It's a different community uh, than what I was used to before. And um, it's, it's, it's part, most of the time it's like being gay is an, sort of not an issue. I mean, it's, it's not in the same way that it was before where, oh, we just don't talk about it because we talk about it. But it doesn't make any difference in how you're treated. And I also think it forced us to, to, to be more willing to tell our own stories to anyone. Mm -hmm. South Carolina is not what it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even five years ago. In Charleston, here to say. well, in Charleston and Myrtle Beach and Columbia, mm -hmm. the, the gay communities are pretty vibrant. If you're gay and you're Christian and you're in Columbia, South Carolina, you have many more options in finding a church home than you did five or six years ago, absolutely. South Carolina is seen as the Bible Belt, and the Bible Belt it is. Reconciling in Christ under the Lutheran ELCA is a concept of being completely open and totally inclusive in all areas of a congregation, so that gay, lesbian, transgendered, all people are welcome, all races, in every aspect of the congregation. Wherever we go, may our lives proclaim good news of great joy. Well, it's a pretty big step to be part of a church at all. I was raised Southern Baptist, but I just assumed I would never find a church or would ever want to be a part of a church. And so I had already resolved myself to never being involved in anything. The first Sunday Michael came to a church service, I walked out of the church with Michael down the front steps, and Michael said to me, you know, I always sort of considered it my neighborhood church because the neighborhood association meets here and my vote here and all that. I always knew I was welcome to come in the back door. I never knew I could come in the front door. And that was just my moment. Reformation is a place where people can be openly demonstrative um, uh, with affection. When we started the ministry, shortly after our daughter came out. So that was um, an experience that we were able to adjust to very quickly. You can be gay and be a Christian in full communion with a, with a, with a denomination, with a congregation, um, to be a part of that community. That really changed a lot for me. Reaching out your hand to your fellow human and engulfing them in a hug and, and saying, welcome, may the peace of God or peace of Christ be with you, and knowing and feeling that it's so genuine and the people that you're interacting with really mean it. It is a tsunami of peace and we have made a big deal to share that peace with whoever walks through the doors. We really had to look at what is God calling us to do in this community. Reconciling Christ came out and um, the next week we started knocking on doors in the neighborhood. And I had been asking God to show me the way to get involved with the church, how to come to church and such as that. And here it is, we were right across the street from it. And it was just, he sent us here. <laughs> There's a genuine love in that church. And, and the congregation is not at all afraid to, to share that. But one of the important things about the journey is we knew when we passed the RIC, that it would lead ultimately to the question of marriage equality and being on the right side of that issue because we couldn't invite people to become part of the church and not extend to them the full benefits of the practice of that religion. We did think about going out of state to a state well, no, we really didn't, we, because we really thought we want to get married where we live. They would ask me things like, when do you think we're ever going to get married, Harriet, in South Carolina? And I would have to say, not in my lifetime, honey, but maybe yours. Well, here I am, and they can get married now. I was never so glad to be so wrong in my life. 
And, and it's interesting because, and I know a lot of people have probably been like, oh, how, how in the world did South Carolina get marriage equality before Florida, Georgia, and so many other states? I've been on the board of South Carolina Equality for several years, but I never expected this would happen so suddenly here in 2014. You know, but right after October the 6th, we knew that the Fourth Circuit, what that meant for South Carolina, but we knew South Carolina was not gonna do it voluntarily, we could tell. And so we had to move very quickly. So we just gathered the forces. We had the post doma litigation task force that I'm chair of. And uh, we got together and we said, you know, we, we just have to rally the forces and, and do what, whatever we have to do. That legal piece of paper is such a piece of protection. Um, for couples and families. And I think particularly when you have a family like mine <laughs> um, who don't respect, don't approve, don't even recognize our relationship. There is something about being able to marry in your community in front of a broader range of, of people from that community that I, that I think has to just be simply awe-inspiring and, and satisfying. I'm really grateful to see change happening as quickly as it has and uh, I hope we see it across the entire United States soon. Now, honestly, to me, it, I, I assume it's really just like racism and, and civil rights. You know, there are absolutely folks all across the state and all across the country who still aren't used to interracial marriage mm -hmm. couples. But the great majority, the great, great majority of Americans are absolutely fine with that. Same thing here. The more that they see marriage announcements, Facebook posts, couples putting their spouses on insurance at their companies, people being comfortable putting a picture of your girlfriend or fiance or spouse on your desk. Without the fear of being fired, which is still an issue in our state. We have a way to go. We're one of 29 states that you can be fired because you're gay. Chief Moore is such a role model. How you doing? Not just to LGBT people, but to me as an ally as well. She's such a wonderful example of, number one, a police chief, good citizen, good woman. I'm so proud she came to me to help her. Our mayor came in in January of last year, January 2014, and it was kind of awkward. I've known him all my life. Everybody on the street kept telling me, watch your back, Crystal, the mayor's after you because of your sexuality. She and her partner first came in last spring right after the mayor was elected, and she was afraid for her job. And she was afraid something would happen because she was a lesbian, and she had heard that he did not like lesbians. He comes to me and said he needs to talk to me, and he hands me seven reprimands. Every reprimand, I had a policy and procedure that the town had gave me to follow by. And as I read them, I was like, Mayor, this is bogus. So I stood up and got ready to walk out. And he said, are you gonna sign these? And I said, no, sir. I'm going to talk to my lawyer and I'll be back. He said, well, this time you no longer have a job, turn in your badge, your gun, and your keys. By the time she was ready to leave, people had gathered outside. Um, <laughs> and they were supporting her. And it's just amazing and, you know, I'm so proud that um, the little town of Lattice, South Carolina, that black people, white people, young people, old people, people she'd put in jail, <laughs> were out there waiting for her to say this is wrong. They didn't care she was a lesbian, she was a good police chief. And they supported her from that day forward to the extent that they came to a grievance hearing. We were able to disclose so many things that had happened. You know, you're just torn apart. 23 years, 24 years. I'm fixing to hit retirement in my career. And he just yanks it all away. And thank goodness for the little town of Latta who respected their police chief for the job she had done. I was able to cross-examine the mayor. He could not show me one policy in the handbook that she had violated. You know, it was very clear that there was no other reason except that she was a lesbian. They actually changed the form of government in the town so that she could be rehired 
Who would have thought in this little town in South Carolina? <laughs> but that's what South Carolina is about. Is South Carolina perfect? No. In rural areas, is it still scary? Yeah. But if Chief Moore from Lada could have just the groundswell of community support that she did to survive and triumph, you know, our little state is doing fine. We are here. The LGBTQIA <laughs> add a letter is here. We're here and we're thriving. Are we still in the minority? Sure. We've got more work to do, but the reality is marriage really helps us bring that forward because when people understand their families, their children at issue, it keeps everything moving forward. I just think we're growing leaps and bounds. We have a diverse population. Everyone is welcome and included. From an economic development standpoint, companies locate here, they have a whole host of issues in their handbook in terms of rights that people have, and you want everyone to feel comfortable when they would uh, come to Columbia. And the current mayor, Steve Benjamin, certainly embodies that and believes that. And I think that's very important. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it's the right thing to do to, to be successful. I don't know. I wouldn't call Clemson conservative. I think it's coming around. It's not like College of Charleston or somewhere up in New York, but it's definitely, it's, it's coming around and I've seen it. We're extremely friendly. It's affordable to live here. It's, there's just a lot going on in South Carolina right now and I'm happy to be here and see it all happening. It is safer now to be gay in South Carolina than it ever has been. Now we can truly say it's a great day in South Carolina and it's getting better, so come home. I kind of have this dream that one day my parents will be next to me during like a pride parade or some affirming event. Um, I don't know if that will happen, but that's, to me, that would be the ultimate, right? We've had individuals that were fearless and fierce and willing to step up and speak out for what was wrong and how to make it right. There's Southern pride standing up for what is right. 